welcome to Bread and Roses. Hi everyone, I'm Maram Namazi. And I'm Fadi Borspuya. There's been a tragic earthquake in Iran and we want to send our thoughts and our condolences and our solidarity with the people who've lost their lives, the loved ones who are missing, and all those who are, you know, in the cold, without food, without water. And, and no support, and no support. And we want to urge all, all our viewers to support through non-governmental agencies because it's proven once and again, the Islamic regime is taking selfie with the, uh, the disaster in Iran. And we want everybody to use non-governmental if they want to support people who are in need of help. They are in desperate need of help and any support via NGOs and uh, civil rights groups yeah. is crucial. Yeah. In this week's program, we'll be discussing the case of Nazanin Zakhari Radcliffe and uh, the need to defend her, get her released, and also support other dual nationals in prison. This week's interview is with Stasha Zajovic on Women's Court in Belgrade. Yes, she is the formidable founder and coordinator of Women in Black. The Insane Fatwa is about how women aren't allowed and girls aren't allowed in an Indian temple and it will bring immorality if they enter Yes, they enter at their own risk. And, and the um, slice of life and good news is? Is from Mauritania and the fact that a blogger who had been given the death penalty has now been released. Stay with us, don't go away. Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe's case is now headline news in Britain, and rightly so. I mean, she is a woman who went with her small daughter, Gabriella, to Iran to visit her parents. When they were trying to fly back, she was detained. She's been in prison ever since, and of course she's been mistreated, tortured. Uh, she was sentenced to five years in prison, and now because of some things that Boris Johnson said, where he implied that she was doing something other than visiting her parents that there's the likelihood that she might get a higher sentence. Yeah, I think that was that was seized upon by the Islamic regime judiciary and the Islamic regime of Iran to uh, say look we, 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 we told you sir we told you so this is the evidence and they might bring other charges against uh, further charges against her but the fact that the case, Boris Johnson made a mistake and um, you know, it brought the case to uh, uh, limelight. Mm. Uh, it's, that's a good thing in a way because uh, the only way that the John Nationals uh, plight could be highlighted, and we know that the uh, Islamic regime of Iran has a very po clear uh, policy and they've been carrying this out for many, many years, and they successfully, as far as they're concerned, um, they, they're holding uh, John Nationals uh, as hostages. And the Western governments uh, uh, would uh, are playing this game, and they they actually cooperating with the Islamic regime and respecting, uh, you know, the judiciary of the Islamic regime of Iran, and um, uh, towing the line. The fact that uh, um, uh, well, it's because yeah. isn't it because uh, you know human rights is not a priority for yeah, them. Yeah. It's making money, it's economic and business relationships, and of course, what is. Uh, you know, uh, being lost here is the fact that these are human lives at stake, at risk, and really human tragedies. When you just look at Nazanin's case, you know, uh, she's lost her hair, she's got on the verge of a nervous breakdown, she's found lumps in her breast, uh, she's, uh, you know, th there's a scene her husband describes where she collapses when she in court and she has to drag herself to sign the papers she's been kept in solitary confinement i mean there's so many tragedies yeah, her, yeah. her daughter doesn't speak english anymore the father hasn't seen uh, their daughter in 19 months yeah. i mean it's, it's a tragic outrageous. case and the fact that boris johnson refused to meet with naz and his husband for such a long time and only agreed uh, um, earlier this it's week enough, yeah. is because because of the pressure, and so the pressure must be kept on foreign office, uh, you know, to ha keep keep a case 
uh, in the media and limelight and hopefully one day she'll be free. Yeah, I mean, the thing is also that we have to remember that there are around 30 dual nationals that are being held in Iran. There's another grandfather, Kamal Furughi, who is an Iranian UK national who's 76, who's been in prison for many years now. You've got Siamak and Bagher Namazi, who are US Iranian nationals. You've got uh, Saeed Malikpur, he's a Canadian Iranian national who's been in prison since 2008. He was on uh, death row and now he's been given life imprisonment. And of course, Iranian uh, Swedish scientist Ahmad Reza Jalali, who's also been given the death sentence. And there. do you know why? Because his case very, uh, is very interesting because they, they wanted him to spy and join the uh, security services abroad while he's, uh, you know, to act for the Islamic regime of Iran and he refused and immediately they arrested him and put him on trial and sentenced him to, uh, you know, to capital punishment. So one of the things that's clear now is that with Nazanin's case being headline news, there's a real chance that she might be able to come home very soon. And so we have to keep supporting her family uh, as well as other dual nationals to ensure that they all come home uh, very, very soon. Now I'd like to also talk to you about the court. Uh, I mean, this was an, a hugely important event, uh, not just for Serbia and the Balkans, but I think internationally it was an important uh, uh, occurrence. Can you explain uh, what the aims of the court were? And also I want you to tell us a bit about the process, because I think yeah, it will yeah. help others who want to set up courts, similar Mid courts. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yes, we uh, since the beginning we yes we learned a lot of experience women's court, but we didn't want to copy. Uh, 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 instead of copy, <laughs> uh, we decided to create our model of uh, women's court. All always uh, mm, encouraged by witnesses. Uh, this was the process of uh, 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 exchange of knowledge. Uh, of witnesses, that does mean uh, mm, survivors, uh, academia women, <laughs> artists, art collectives, or of course, uh, organizer, 10 organizations, the women and we coordinate the whole process. And uh, it is the unique, uh, I think, unique, our women who are unique because uh, put together women from, LX, uh, from all, all, all ex Yugoslavia countries. All ex Yugoslavia countries, you know, uh, it is seven countries. It is not, it wasn't easy. This process uh, put together women, and thanks to this organizing process, they change their uh, uh, stereotypes about each other, uh, that Serbs are aggressors, that uh, uh, no Serb women are uh, 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 um, victims. For Serbs uh, who, who uh, uh, participated, it was very, very easy to face Bosnian women. I'm speaking not about activists, I am speaking about grassroots women. For them, for one was very difficult to pronounce, to speak in presence of uh, Bosnian women, of Croat or Albanian women. In this process they told, yes, uh, uh, oh, Bosnian women, they never know that in Serbia there are resistance against forced mobilization, against militarism. It, this uh, it, uh, helped to change these uh, stereotypes and narratives about war in Yugoslavia, also for women of Yugoslavia. And, and, uh, it was also beautiful process uh, thanks to uh, 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 thanks to uh, 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 links of uh, re friendship relation, but also for academia women, for a lot of academia women who participate in our process because they are so-called experts who, uh, uh, in the moment of uh, who. Uh, analyze who made the analysis for them it was very difficult that we thought that no your analysis should be made on base of experience of, of these women uh, experience uh, of these women uh, shouldn't be uh, uh, put in your models in your in your uh, you know in your patterns 
you have to be guided by these women like us. And so and the main actors of the process were, with, were witnesses until now. And we created this community of victims, of witnesses. They are they took responsibility to encourage other women to organize uh, now mini women's court in their region, etc., etc. And also creating a lot of other activities together. They made uh, not all of women who participate, who, who uh, uh, testified in, in Sarah, or, or, or 40, uh, 36 women, but one, one group of 20 people. 20 women, they are very hard, they became activists, all of them participating on different kind of activism, you know, I don't know, also, and all our activities, not only as peace activities and also in anti-militaristic activity, etc., etc. It is the one of the, and also uh, they, uh, they were encouraged by this process to, uh, to, uh, uh, so for, to make some legal legal bet, legal problems to issue also uh, testimonies of uh, women uh, served to institutional legal system legal system to for example reparation for rape in some case in Croatia etc etc and this is the, a lot of uh, I don't know, a lot of uh, benef, benef, I don't know, a lot of results of this. But I think politically, morally, it is the big, big uh, event. Especially because we continue, we will continue. We don't know how, what will happen. We know that we will continue. We mm -hmm. uh, what were the aims of the? Uh, what were the uh, areas that you looked at in the court? And uh, what decisions? Uh, all kind. Uh, yes, all kind of violence. We cannot separate gender violence uh, from uh, ethnic militaristic uh, uh, class social uh, uh, ethnic violence it is not possible you know it is not possible and we of course we work in those level for example uh, in some region one of the problems in whole region that we live so called so called uh, it is not peace as absence it is peace as absence of war but it is not just peace and women are really refused and women don't trust to legal institutions neither in uh, a special course for war crimes organized in different parts of Syria because uh, they don't uh, this legal system score they don't satisfy needs they 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 are oh, 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 they are uh, mm, predominant in whole region, uh, impunity is predominant in level of society and also in level of state. But my exp one of the experiences that women, they don't trust in so-called legal system, but we, 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 uh, we, we of course respect Hague Tribunal, despite of a lot of death problems with Hague Tribunal, etc., etc. Women believe in restorative justice, in alternative way of justice, and they need to be recognized as actors of social process, and they reject to be reduced to passive victims. This and they need dignity and they need uh, autonomy and be, uh, be, you know, be recognized as uh, human beings less with their uh, 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 dreams, with their, you know, with their wishes and they are, uh, they are big source of, uh, for me, big source of knowledge. Uh, of uh, uh, knowledge about international policy and uh, for me as a feminist it was important that I we, we created together this space to speak about differences to speak about uh, our different different points of view of different of few areas anyway this is the very beautiful and challengeable and I don't know how it is no we are working and uh, without uh, um, be be pressed be, without this pressure and so but for other part we have big problem with donors because we don't accept any imposition of donors it is very difficult we try to create some different way anyway it is not easy but anyway uh, can I ask you a final question yes. is on the issue of retribution um, I mean uh, what do you think about uh, what what is justice? Because some will say justice is retribution. I'm sure for you women, don't agree justice that. Is, uh, but no, no, but mm -hmm. can you explain? Can you explain that? For example, a lot of women told me. For example, especially Srebrenica women victims or the, uh, the 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 biggest atrocity in this space. 
we don't need we don't need this jail for 100 years for we, we need be recognized we need we, we we need be respected and also yes of course but more than a lot of women told me more than uh, punishment more than prisons we need um, space um, for um, uh, 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 in space to uh, speak out about what's happened. For example, in case of Serbia, uh, uh, whose regime uh, rejected for years until now to recognize genocide of Srebrenica, this is our big battle. I believe me that is uh, is more important that uh, Serbian regime recognize that Serbia is one of the pillars of the genocide. You know, because without Serbian regime, military financial and all, uh, uh, all political uh, support Srebrenica genocide is not you know it's not possible you know it is we know and this recognition is we, we would should be one of the big very, very important moral and political point for this women for uh, for whole community because the reco- what does mean reconciliation the reconciliation is process of restorative justice without responsibility without assume responsibility it is does it is an empty word we, we really don't we avoid to, to uh, even use this concept of response of uh, uh, reconciliation we use trust uh, solidarity or for example uh, responsibility ethic of responsibility etc etc because people really are fed up with this extreme abuse of victims of uh, from international community for all for all uh, regimes in this country uh, in this region etc especially community victims are submitted to terrible terrible abuse anyway and that's why in our work we use we speak about these abuses you know and uh, this is the restorative yes uh, uh, it doesn't mean that we reject legal system no 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 uh, without Hague tribunal oh it was more difficult we support in lot of issues we don't have time now to speak about the the, the problems of the Hague tribunal big uh, big uh, our uh, 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 critiques to Hague tribunal but uh, uh, and we also uh, support women to uh, testify in uh, uh, these courts, of course, but we need, we need to create a new way uh, uh, of justice, uh, not legal, on, not only the law, but justice. We, this is, I think this is our responsibility, special for our part for Serbia anyway. Maybe for me it's easier because I live in Serbia and I have to assume big responsibilities sometimes it is easier anyway for one side it is easier for other side it is big it was during the 25 years it was also big risk <laughs> because go uh, decide to go to community victims without knowing it was very big challenge it was very big big risk if we don't have we didn't have an experience in this we didn't we couldn't learn from other side but risk is <laughs> challenge it is was not it is yeah it is it is good yes it is good results it is good in human in human and it's also uh, in uh, in feminist uh, uh, knowledge for feminist knowledge and for one the militarism and so yeah Always uh, disobedient. Your yes, motto. always disobedience. It is also everywhere. Women, uh, community, they like this, and so we explain each other. It is beautiful, and uh, yes, you you said yeah yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, so yes, uh, resisting resisting is yeah. Resisting is hope, and it is also joy, and we laugh, we, we sing, and it is nice. Yes, uh, it is hard, but I don't know. It is also. Thank you. Well, this week is from India and it is about the Sabarimala shrine. Now the president 
of this temple and shrine has said that women from the ages and girls from the age of 10 to 50 can't come into the shrine. They can't go? No. And if they come, yes. it will become a spot like Thailand. And it's... And, and, you know what that means. And, <laughs> and they're going to affect the whole, you know, the environment and bring corruption. Immoral and immorality yeah. in, in yeah. over there. And what are they going to do? If and do and he said, you know, you can't have women walking up the hill from ten to fifty, and it's ten it's to fifty. It's hard work. Walking up They're the hill like, under any sort of weather to just, come into the shrine. They're trying to look after the people, you know. They're so caring. It's just like yeah. they're just so worried. And there's always obviously threats involved too, because they then say that if, no moral woman will enter, even if the court makes uh, them open the doors to women but also the they security can't ensure their security how yes. typical is yes it? okay and they've they said we have to call in the police and naturally because these are women they have to be women police officers to come and protect them from i don't know why because this is a very peaceful religion i suppose isn't <laughs> yeah it? it is very peaceful <laughs> yes. uh they just kill people for yes. eating beef you know yes. um but also, uh, what's interesting is that the Lord whose shrine it is, he's celibate. So I guess That's they're a why. bit concerned the about, about the ten-year-old ten girls, girls going, going into see. a temple. Yes, It's just, you know, I I'm sorry. Insanity has insanity. no boundary and... No you know. religion. Insanity has no religion. All religions are insane. Muhammad Mohater, he's a Mauritanian blogger who was sentenced to the death penalty in 2014 for a post on Facebook which criticized Islam's role in perpetrating discrimination and slavery. And the fact that uh, uh, political groups and political parties um, and religious groups use that to maintain their power structure in society and the international pressure has resulted in him being free. It's great news. He has been freed, of course. Uh, he's had to repent. He's had to say that he regrets what he's done. Nonetheless, though, he's free, and I think that's hugely important, given that there are so many such cases of people who are being sentenced to death or long-term prison merely for saying what they think and expressing their views, which is, you know, a hallmark of any civilized society, being able to express yourself. When you hear this good news of someone being released, no matter what the circumstances, it's really good, it's isn't such it? A, such a good news that blasphemy mob has been defeated once again in different, in another part of the world. The, the fight is there and free thinkers are at the forefront of this fight. We've reached the end of our program. We look forward to seeing you again at the same time and same place next week. Until then, goodbye. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us
Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.